My name is Conrad Steiner. I'm a doctor of medicine. Tonight's story has the title, Doctor Impossible. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. To the profession of medicine, to the men and women who labor in its cause, this story is dedicated. Our presentation tonight, a chapter of medical history. The object in point, a hypodermic syringe and needle. The case in point, William Stewart Halstead, age 32, graduate of Yale, graduate of the College of Physicians and Surgeons, visiting surgeon to seven New York hospitals. His career to date has been brilliant and swift, but soon he will journey to the depths of defeat and despair. This is surgery, 1884, at a famous New York hospital. Halstead's two assistants, Drs. Kemp and Latimer, are in attendance. Nurse Rogers adjusts the shade since the only light source at this time is daylight. The scheduled operation, drainage of an empyema of the gallbladder on the verge of rupture. The patient's ankles and wrists are strapped to the operating table. The patient's sense of apprehension tends to mount at this time. The anesthesia is prepared by Dr. David Morgan, intern. Since anesthesia has been in use for more than 20 years, surgery is no longer as dangerous as it once was. Now more than 50% of the patients survive. The surgeon on the case, Dr. William Halstead. Gentlemen, how do you feel? Don't worry. The surgeon and his assistants no longer operate in street clothes. They wear garments specifically reserved for surgery. This has at least one beneficial result. It helps keep their street clothes clean. Antiseptic surgery is still new, the method's crude. The hands of the surgeon and his assistants are washed in soap and water. Then rinsed in a mild carbolic acid solution. But in the years to come, all this will change. And this is one of the men who will help change it, William Stewart Halstead. Kemp, will you get the instruments, please? Yes, sir. Charles, you got the instruments? Yeah. Wait a minute. I've got to get to Brett out first. Should be. They've been in there more than 15 minutes. Mm. Ought to take care of them bugs. <laughs> that bread ain't ready, though. The operation is now underway. Carbolic acid solution is sprayed over the entire operating area for antiseptic. Before its shortcomings are discovered, the acid fumes will claim the life of more than one world-famous surgeon. Among them, Baron Joseph Lister. The operation is now complete. How does she look to you? She took the surgery in stride. Getting over the anesthetic is something else again. Hmm. Feeble heartbeats. Cold. There must be a better way to do it. Both for us and the patient. You mean the procedure? I mean this. What medicine needs today is an anesthetic without a hangover. There must be a better way. Cocaine. Cocaine, the newly discovered drug, is seized upon as a possible answer. Within a matter of weeks, Halstead begins testing it as an anesthetic agent. We know this much. Apply this cocaine solution to mucous membrane and it relieves pain. It kills feeling. It's an anesthetic. That's fine. But it's not enough. 
The area of insensitivity is small. It has to be. But suppose the cocaine solution is injected directly into the nerve. What happens then? It's hard to say. I don't know. No one does. There's only one way to find out. Dr. Halstead, I'd be glad to volunteer. Thank you, Morgan. The first one's on me. It's still possible the cocaine may do more than just to sensitize the nerve. It may kill the nerve altogether. We don't know. You'd better keep a log on this, Doctor. We'll start out with a 4% solution cocaine. Quantity? Six minims. Well, one of you better keep track of the time, too. We'll have to know how long to wait before the results take place. Ready? Six minims are injected subcutaneously on the dorsal or undersurface of the forearm at the junctions of the middle and upper thirds near the ulnar border. Minutes. All right, let's see. No sensation. No sensation. The cocaine apparently blocks the nerve from the point of injection to the periphery. Then you found the answer. Only half of it. We still have to find out if it's temporary or permanent. Ten minutes, no change. Twenty minutes, sensation beginning to return. Twenty-five minutes. Complete restoration of sensation. We proved just one thing, gentlemen. Cocaine is able to anesthetize the ulnar nerve. And that's all we proved. Now we're going to find out if it can do the same to every subcutaneous nerve, to the sciatic, to the brachial plexus, to every nerve in the body. I'm going to need help. You've got it, Doctor. Good. We'll map out all the nerve systems, arrive at optimum dosages, duration of anesthetic effect, after effects, if any. I don't anticipate any problem there. My arm's completely normal. I feel fine. Day after day, Halstead and his associates inject themselves with larger and larger doses of cocaine. No problem of after effect is observed. A few weeks later, Halstead demonstrates spinal anesthesia for the first time, once again using cocaine as the anesthetic agent. A fold of skin caught up in a clothespin is without feeling. The spinal block is complete. January 1885. Experiments go on. Success follows success until a Saturday evening. Bill, what are you doing down here all by yourself? Oh, hello, Dr. Welch. It's Saturday night. Don't you get enough of this place all week? Let's get out of here, take a walk, get some fresh air. How about it? Bill, what's the matter? I don't know. I'm not sure. Look, you've been doing wonderful work, Bill, but don't you think that you've been overdoing it a little bit? Overworking, not eating, not, not getting enough sleep, that's no good. You're smart enough to know that. Bill. Oh, sorry, Dr. Welch. Come on over to my house. We can sit down and have a talk.
usual gloomy Monday, gentlemen? The usual? Shall we get started, Doctor? Put it down. What do you mean? Put it down. I'm sorry, Doctor. I don't understand. It is my considered opinion that cocaine is a habit-forming drug. Recall the past four or five weekends. Why have they been so depressing? Why? All week long, we feel fine. Then the weekends come along, Saturdays, Sundays. We feel low, depressed. Can't wait until we get back to work. There's not one of us that has any interest that lies outside of this room. Why? Well, maybe it's just overworked, Doctor. Maybe we got ourselves too wrapped up with Face all this. Face up to it, gentlemen. It's not the work that's driving us anymore. It's the drug. We proved one thing more about cocaine than we intended. It's a drug of addiction. And gentlemen, we have become addicts. Oh, my God. God. March 1885. Within a few short months, a grim change has taken place. There are no more successes for Halstead, no more glory. Even his practice is gone. The two-edged weapon has taken its toll. Delmonico's this ain't, but that leg of lamb won't kill you. Take at least a few bites, you're insulting the chef. Mr. Brown, eat. Hello, Max. Oh, hello, Max. Say better hello to the leg of lamb. Not hungry. Not hungry today, not hungry yesterday, not hungry last week. Something spoiling your appetite, Mr. Brown. It's all right, Max. How much do I owe? You didn't eat, so you don't pay. You know, a good medical man you should see. Why not tomorrow? A good doctor friend I got up on 4th Street. Maybe tomorrow you see him, huh? I don't think so, Max. Good night, Max. Good night. Born in shadows, and to this day they remain in shadows. The months and years Halstead spent struggling with the scourge of cocaine. In later years, there will be speculations, theories, rumors, and denials. All we know is that these were times when Halstead walked among the shadows, and he walked alone. And what of Kemp, the studious one? He too moved into the shadows. There was one letter from California, strained, tortured, and then silence. And Latimer? Almost at once, he turned toward the shadows, and they closed around him. And the young intern, David Morgan, little more than a boy. What of him? September 1887, three years since Halstead moved into the shadows. Excuse me. I'm looking for David Morgan. Does he live here? Why, you're, you're Dr. Halstead, aren't you? Yes. Please come in. Come in, doctor, please. Thank you. How's David? I haven't seen him for some time. Is he at home tonight? Why, he's dead. He died two years ago. 
You didn't hear about it? No. No, I didn't. I'm sorry. What was it? An overdose of cocaine. Doctor, I thought you might like to know that one of the last things David said was that Dr. Halstead experimented on himself more than all the others combined. He worshipped you. You can see how much worship I deserve. You need a haircut. Yes, I suppose I do. That suit can stand cleaning. A little late for that. Afraid they'll have to burn it. Not at all. A little sponging would do it a world of good. Why, even with David's suits, I... You would have been a fine doctor, Mrs. Morgan. There's only one thing I can tell you. I know it's not much comfort, but... He didn't die for nothing. Believe me. I know. David knew it, too. You know, doctor, nobody wants to die, especially a young boy. But he didn't complain. Even when he was terribly sick at the end, he didn't complain. Except that he couldn't go on with his studies. Oh, I'm keeping you. I'm sorry. You're, you're probably expected at the hospital. Not exactly expected, Mrs. Morgan. But that's where I'm going. I thought you might be. Good night, Doctor. I've done everything. I've tried everything. It's no good. No good at all. I tried to run away from it. I tried everything I knew. I drank, I wandered, I traveled. I took a boat trip. I stayed at the Windward Isles. I came back and I was still caught in the same hopeless trap. I can't fight it alone. I've tried and failed a dozen times over. I need help. Will you give it to me? Dr. Welch? I got a letter from Baltimore a few weeks ago, Bill. Johns Hopkins is setting up a medical school. I've been offered the chair of pathology. I've accepted. That's wonderful. Congratulations. I bought a house on Cathedral Street. My housekeeper's down there now getting it ready for me. It's a large house, Bill. I'd like to come along. Three-fourths of your usual dose. We'll keep you on that for two weeks. And the dose drops down to one half. Another two weeks and down to a quarter. Two weeks more, then nothing. I understand. The weaning period. It's the only way we can tackle it. Complete immediate withdrawal seems to lead to collapse and death. Like your room? Very much. Nice view of the garden. Hmm. It won't be too bad for the first couple of weeks, Bill. After that, it's going to get rough. When we get you down to quarter dosage, we'll start worrying then. We'll start worrying now. This is the time when you've got to decide. A few weeks, and your whole body will be screaming for the stuff. Then we'll let it scream. There are going to be days when you'll be climbing the walls, pounding the door with your fists. You'll be ready to sell your soul for it. I'm not trying to panic you, Bill. I want you to understand what's ahead of you. I understand.
You'll do. Three weeks since you went into complete physical collapse. You had me scared green. You must have the constitution of an ox. Thanks. There were times there. I never thought you'd make it. Neither did I. I've been making a few inquiries. There's a job waiting for you at Johns Hopkins. Anytime you're ready. Thank you. Doctor, just one more thing. Yes? I'd like to have some cocaine, about 200 minims. Two hundred minims, a symbol of struggle, but the struggle has been won. Johns Hopkins, 1887. The man who was lost is found. William Stewart Halstead resumes his work, work which will leave a mark and a memorial in almost every field of modern surgery. He devises an operation for the cure of inguinal hernia, considered till then almost incurable. He conceives, designs, and introduces rubber gloves into surgery. He initiates a new surgical procedure to deal with cancer of the breast and confers upon women suffering from this disease benefits beyond estimation. He invents and introduces to surgery silk sutures, gutta percha tissue, the mattress suture, silver foil for wound dressings, the Halstead artery forceps, all now in universal use. There were years of recognition and reward, so much of which he owed to this room which had been his prison, and the man who had been his friend, Dr. William Welch. Oh, that's... that's wonderful, Bill, wonderful. I'd like to hear some more, but I... had a lecture in the morning. And I have to operate. Oh, say, Will, before you go, I have something I want to give you. Oh? Been meaning to return this for a long time. Two hundred minims. Looks like it's never been open. It hasn't. Good night, Will. Thank you. Good night, Doctor. Thank you. God keep you, gentlemen. God keep you well. <laughs>